the slightest stress or worry and I would lie awake for hours, unable to drop off. Then I started doing one simple thing, times tables. I started with a 13 times table in my head until I could recite it without pausing, then moved on to the 14 times table and so on. It was enough to distract my brain from whatever was worrying me and allowed me to get to sleep. I am astounded at the difference it has made. I have suffered for decades and this simple exercise sorted it within a few weeks. Viven Windle, Southampton The best advice I got was to avoid checking the time when I woke up. Eventually, I would go back to sleep, rather than worrying that it was 4 a.m. and calculating how many hours sleep I would get. Philip Evans, Macedonia running three times a week has helped me massively. With the stress of a business and small children, running long distances enables me to sleep without worrying. It also means I smoke and drink less, which helps, and my heart rate is far lower. I seem too able to sleep regardless of the problems in my day. And on Berkshire I use a technique, which I came across in an Oliver Berkman column in this newspaper, that involves thinking of random words. I fall asleep very quickly but, like most men in their 60s, I tend to have to wake up once in the night, and the random word technique helps me to get back to sleep pretty reliably. Jessica I have tried many lifestyle changes, but the one that makes the biggest impact is exercise. 30 minutes, 5 days a week enables me to fall asleep and stay asleep much more easily and to wake up at a more consistent time. Sweet smell of success essential oil of lavender in the bath. Photograph Rosemary Calvert Getty images in on Northern Ireland I stopped drinking alcohol and avoided caffeinated drinks after 7 p.m. and began meditating and practicing mindfulness. I have a hot bath containing lavender essential oils before bed and bought an electric blanket. And on London I started taking liquid magnesium and within three days my sleep was vastly improved. At first I took 20 milliliters and after three weeks increased it to 250 milliliters. It helps me to sleep better because I no longer have the aching restless legs that kept me awake. Pamela Window, New Mexico Even now that I'm older, I avoid naps, so I generally go to bed at about 9 p.m. I used to fall deeply asleep for 3 to 4 hours, and then wake up and toss and turn 4 hours. Now I get up, turn on a nightlight, make a cup of decaf tea, and browse a bit on my laptop. When I go back to bed, still in the dark, I fall asleep quite quickly for another 4 to 5 hours. Charlotte Ritson, Glasgow I use a cheap app on my phone that has an assortment of relaxing sounds. It blocks out the small noises that would normally disturb me, and is not as distracting as having the TV on. In warmer weather, I use a fan at night to get a similar effect. Emma, London finding sleep hypnosis videos on YouTube has been the key, specifically those by Michael Seeley. There are videos for relaxation, stress release, positive thinking, lucid dreaming, etc. Putting on one of those and an eye mask and listening to the calm voice clears your head and relaxes your entire body. Matt Dickinson, Bristol My issues with sleep were related to being too warm in bed. Someone recommended uncovering my feet at night to keep me cool. It felt odd at first, but has worked like a charm. Kathy Valdez, London The biggest improvement for me was getting single duvets with different tog levels. I am a still and silent sleeper who likes to have a weight of duvet up to my neck and my better half prefers a waist-tight lightweight duvet and the freedom to fidget and turn. And on Berlin not having internet access did it for me. On the first day, I had no idea what to do. Netflix was not an option anymore, browsing Reddit. I realized that I am too exhausted to actively do anything, read a book, cook, go outside. I would usually fight exhaustion with screens. The virtual world filled up in emptiness I experienced, which led to the exhaustion in the first place. After a few days, I started tuning into my needs and I was able to break the vicious cycle of exhaustion and overstimulation. Sound of silence earplugs. Photograph Andrew Peterson Alamy Anon, London 2 Things Mindfulness and Porridge. I find the practice of mindfulness and sinking into the now helpful. Porridge has become my favorite catch-all cure, though, there is something about getting up, warming some oats and milk and consuming it that is very soothing. I'm usually fast asleep within the hour, even after quite bad insomnia. There is some chemistry behind this, the tryptophan in milk and oats, apparently. And on earplugs. I go to bed at about 11 p.m. and used to routinely wake up between 3 a.m. and 4.30 a.m. I don't recall it being noise that woke me up, and wasn't aware of any noise keeping me awake. 
However, since starting to sleep with foam earplugs I almost always sleep straight through. And on the single change I made was asking for help. Last year, I confessed to my GP that my sleep difficulties were so bad that I had been taking high doses of over-the-counter sleeping tablets every night for more than 10 years. He immediately referred me to a sleep workshop at a local mental health center. The workshop blew me away. I learned countless practical techniques and came away with the confidence to tackle my addiction and stop medicating. Ross, Glasgow my phone is no longer allowed in my bedroom. It sleeps in the office. Now, I don't sit up late staring at the glowing screen, looking for one more tweet, swiping for one more Facebook status refresh. I read, which makes me feel tired and I fall asleep quickly when I put the book down. Snooze-inducing Colin Firth, photograph Jason Merrick Getty Images Nikki, West Yorkshire audiobooks have been my saviour. Awake with a busy mind in the night, it can be so tricky to switch off. I find audiobooks, with a timer set, the perfect distraction. The key is the right tone and voice. Simon Armitage reading Walking Home, Brian Dick reading James Rebanks' The Shepherd's Life and Colin Firth reading Graham Greene's The End of the Affair are examples of my go-to books and, hey presto, I rarely hear the end of the chapters. And on, Italy, I set a bedtime alarm that tells me when to start going to bed. I'm naturally an evening person so have a tendency to get distracted until it is late, and generally procrastinate. But once the alarm has gone off I have to focus on going to bed. Sometimes I do ignore it, but I have to decide to, which is different from just letting things drift. Eleanor Radford, London I started thinking of the time I was lying awake as being valuable, as if I were actually asleep. I was getting rest just by lying in the dark, my body and mind were recovering. This helped me to relax more. I also started meditating and used the breathing exercises I learned while lying in bed. Rachel Hinchliffe Derbyshire The most amazing blackout blinds, they cost quite a lot, but guarantee no more waking at 4am in the summer months. They block out nearly all light. A lifetime of insomnia means I have tried pretty much everything available to improve my sleep, but these have been a life changer. Worth every penny. And on I notice that even one small glass of wine would really disrupt my sleep. I wasn't a big drinker, but I did like a wine or a beer most evenings. One glass of wine with dinner would make me wake up at 2 a.m. wide awake, unable to sleep again until 5 a.m., then feel exhausted the next day. I have almost become teetotal now. I only drink on social occasions or at weekends. I sleep so much better now.